All right, so today we are going to talk about Polovitsian Dances by Alexander Borodin. So this is a Russian piece. It actually comes from an opera called Prince Igor. So this wasn't a standalone. It was part of a larger collection of works. However, a lot of people really enjoyed this piece and at, since then have arranged it so that it could be played by itself. So it is now performed quite a bit in orchestras by itself as Polovitsian Dances and has been arranged for other instrumentation, including bassoon. So this piece has two main things that I would like to talk about, and they're actually quite related. So the first is this concept of breathing. This piece was not originally written for bassoon, in the sense of by the bassoon itself. Um, the bassoon obviously takes part in the larger piece, but it usually has some other little side bits, some counter melodies, uh, little interjections, but it does not have the melody itself the strings have the melody. And the things about strings is that they do not need to breathe. Well, they need to breathe, but they don't need to breathe in order to play their instrument. So when you're playing this piece, which is an entire long page, one of the first things that you'll notice is that there is not a single rest. There is no place whatsoever to take a moment, reset your embouchure, take a breath, anything along these lines, because it wasn't written for the winds originally, so they didn't need to worry about it. So the first thing is to figure out where are you going to breathe? And it's actually very, very important. This piece is chopped up into little fragments that when put all together become the larger phrase. So when you look at these individual parts, these individual little sections, it's very easy to uh, play it in little section, play it in another separate little section and sneak in a breath between each of these. So it ends up being something ba da 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 That is exhausting. Taking a breath every two measures is actually just going to cause problems, not help. And the reason for that is, especially with the double reeds, we only have such a large space to get the air through. We're not expanding our air like the, wood, the, the flutes where it goes out into the, into the wilderness and only part of it actually gets into the instrument. We have very, very small spaces to get our air through, which means it's resistant, which means we have backup pressure, which means we have more air in our lungs than we actually need. So when you're planning your breaths, there's, we, will, we want to think about longer phrases. Not only is it more musical to do it that way, but also it will help us expel all of the air. Because essentially think of your lungs like a balloon where you fill it up nice and big and then you let just a little bit of air out, but then you blow it up again and then a little bit of air out and then you blow it up again. With each intake, you're taking more air in than you are exhaling which is causing your, your lung capacity to fill too much. And all the bad air, the carbon dioxide, is sitting in your chest waiting to be released. It's just sitting there wanting to go. <sighs> so thinking about where you take a breath and marking it in is very important. And I would recommend thinking of at least four measures long, if not longer. This piece does go relatively quickly. It can go by quicker. So you can make it for extended periods of time. So planning your breath is going to be really, really crucial for this in order to get through it so that you are using your air properly, it sounds more musical, and it will impact the second thing. So our second thing is endurance. Just like we have with a breathing issue, the, this piece is long without a rest. So it means that you better be ready to play without a stop, without a break for a very extended period of time. The only way to build up this endurance is to practice it. So there's no tips I can provide you other than the fact that after you work on little chunks at a time, start adding bits at a time and, and making it longer. So you work on a few um, measures, get your technique situated, you feel comfortable. Don't just read it all the way through. Let's say, okay, I'm going to work on the first three lines. Find a place to pause, work on that see how it feels. Do you sound in tune? Um, can you breathe properly? Is all the technique feel comfortable? Okay, great. Let's add on another line. And you keep adding it on until you can eventually get all the way through. 
And what you're doing is just like going to the gym and working out, you're building your corner muscles. You're building up your endurance where you can keep a firm embouchure this entire time. And the embouchure is gonna be really crucial because we wanna stay in tune, we wanna have good tone quality, and of course, at the very end, what do they ask you to do? Sustain a note for four measures and decrescendo as you do it. So after all of this, it's like you're doing a marathon, you're going, you're going, you're going, and then they ask you to go uphill really, really slowly to reach the finish line. Oy. So you need to build up this endurance. It's not gonna happen overnight. You're gonna need to practice this extensively in order to feel comfortable that you can get all the way through this piece without needing a break. And I will tell you, it takes some time and it takes some effort to constantly keep moving through this. And one of the reasons for that is it's because, well, the piece is kind of repetitious. So it's not the most engaging over the long haul. There are little, little um, tricks in there where there are notes that differ that you have to pay attention to, but it can get a little redundant, which is understood. So listen to the piece, the original orchestral piece, so you can hear what it's supposed to sound like. That is always very inspiring rather than playing by yourself. So you can keep going and you can keep practicing this over and over so you can build up the endurance to get through the piece all the way through. All right, so we have two things that we talked about, both which are related. First is planning your breaths. It's very easy to truncate each of these sections into short little bits and take too many breaths and fill up your airstream with bad air rather than getting it out. So plan your breaths, write them in, and think longer phrases. Second, endurance. You're going to need to build this up in order to get through this piece. And the only way to do that is to practice. So keep working on practicing, adding chunks at a time, and then eventually starting to play through the entire thing with a tuner, mind you, so you can stay in tune, and then you'll be strong enough to get all the way through solidly to the very end. All right, so that's what we have for Polavencian dances. Go practice. <laughs>